Eric Lawler. Well, Eric is the first act on today. And uh, Eric started off his uh, comedy career in uh, Des Bishop's Joy in the Hood, which Eric's great. He uh, tells it like it is. I mean, you get a lot of comics who uh, maybe like, adopt this persona of, like, I'm top or I'm this or I'm that. Uh, but Eric, Eric, Eric's from the streets and he shows in his show. He's, a, he's, he's what I consider in, in the comedy circles in Ireland a, a safe pair of hands. I've never seen Eric doing a dodgy gig. I was listening to Morning Ireland there one morning, hence the name. And it was yet another panel discussion talking about the banking crisis and who to blame for the banking crisis. And the former government minister, Mary O'Rourke, was on this particular debate. And she got very, very flustered. And she said one of the best things I've ever heard on live national radio. She said, and I quote, There are people walking around the banking sector scot-free. Some of these people need to be fingered. It's a lovely, intimate room. Perfect for, uh, for stand-up. And as, as, uh, as Jerry, I'm sure, has said already, it's... It's a good place to see comedians up close and personal kind of thing and having to sweat it out and really work hard. <laughs> and I was doing that today. The Irish holidaymakers will descend en masse. The Irish holiday rep, he will meet, he will greet them and he will say, Right, okay, first things first. We're going to go down to the local hospital, to the Burns unit, because let's face it, we're going to spend most of the fucking two weeks there anyway. <laughs> and then we're going to move on down to Sally O'Brien's where we'll watch a recording of Ireland playing in Italia 90. <laughs> and we're all going to sing ole 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 as if the fucking match is alive. I think I was aware that there were one or two people in the audience not from Ireland, so what I did try to do was speak better, enunciate my words, you know, um, and not to speak with such a heavy Dublin brogue, um, because I find that... Um, that goes over a lot of tourists' heads. But probably not such a good idea to smoke one of these laugh out loud joints just before you're going to visit the Anne Frank house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I'm not too fucking proud of that one. <laughs> now, for those of you not too familiar with Anne Frank, she was the world hide and seek champion in 1940. <laughs> Galway is one of my, like, I'm not just saying it because I'm here, but Galway will be my favourite other city in, in, in the country. And I, I mean, I gig down here prolifically. You know, um, Roisin Dove, uh, the old Cuba years ago, you know, and I've done gigs in the town hall. And uh, it's just, just a great city to do comedy. And they're very comedy savvy, I find Galway people, you know. So it's always a pleasure to come down here and do gigs. Does he speak like that outside the ring? Can you picture him? He's met a girl. He's bringing her home to his folks' house. He walks into the sitting room. He pulls down a specially installed microphone. <laughs> Mother and father! <laughs> Introducing to you my well-to-do family on a nice set of town, weighing 120 pounds, with vital statistics of 36, 24, 32. Oh, let's hear it for my new girlfriend, Samantha. And when are you folks going to go to bed? Because we're getting ready to rumble. <laughs>